Okay, hello. We would like to thanks to organizers who have who gave us our opportunity to present a presentation today. Presenters will be Hugo Nishio, Haruki Ogawa, and Keita Mori from Chiba Institute of Technology. We would like to present how CIT brains are acting toward Robocop. First, let me introduce our team. Next, we will introduce the technologies that we operate in this competition and newly implemented in this competition. We will then present what we are currently working on for RoboCop 2022 from both hardware's and software's perspectives. The last step is to post QR codes for our websites, Twitter and GitHub. Let me start by introducing the team. In the team introductions, we will talk about our university and its members. CIT Brains is formed in 2006, led by volunteer members of Chiba Institute of Technology, aiming to win RoboCop Humanoid League. CIT Brains is a team formed Chiba Institute of Technology has two campuses near Tokyo, Japan. The name of the prefecture where it is located is Chiba Prefecture, which is the origin of the university's name. Chiba Institute of Technology founded in 1942 as an industrial university with a current, with a current is a current enrollment about 1,000 students. We are developing a robot at a location rented from the university. We have a court similar to a tournament, and we also develop around the game. We have weekly meetings to share information on our Perspective fields. The robots are all made by students using the university's CNC machining centers and drilling machines. CIT range includes 26 undergraduate students, a graduate student, and few faculties. Robot development is led primarily by undergraduate students. 19% of our undergraduate students began learning robotics at university. The image is a photo of RoboCup Asia Pacific 2021, Aichi, Japan, held in November last year. Over the years, we have developed a number of robotic robots. As a result, we aim to make every robot more robust and easier to maintain. The first robot we developed is Hajime robot. It uses gyro acceleration sensors for feedback control. We have since developed six generations of robots. Hajime robot, Dynamo, Axelite, Gankenkun, and Sustainer. Sustainer is a new robot being developed for RoboCop 2022, a detailed explanation will be given in the second half of this report. RoboCop Humanoid League Virtual Season 2021 and 2022. We use a model of Gankin Kun, which was active in the three tournaments of RoboCop 2027, 18, and 19. Next, 
we will introduce the robot models used in this competition. Here is an image of a real robot and the robot model in Webot. We built our model based on two aims. The other is to make the model as close to as uh, reality as possible. The first is to reduce CPU loads. In we did two things to bring the model closer to reality. Those are the implementation of closed link in the model and the measurements of the actual motor characteristics used and reflected in the model. We will explain them. In order to reproduce the behavior of the robots in a, in a simulation environment, a closed link mechanism is modeled. Closed link proto models could not be found on the internet and were difficult to produce. The proto model of the closed link we produce is available at the URL below. Our real robot is equipped with a servo motors called V3M series from Kondo Kagaku. However, Kondo Kagaku did not disclose the vicious resistance, status, friction, and NT curve of those servo motors. We carried out our experiments with apprentice shown in the figure to measure their perspectives and apply them to our simulations. The three image shows exactly the same kicking behavior under different conditions. The figure one shows a kick simulation performed with only two pieces of information published by Kondo Kagaku, maximum torque and no road speed. The second one simulates the kick by setting static friction and vicious resistance obtained from the experiment. The figure three is the kick of the real robot. In the simulation without setting the obtained value, the robot fell when kicking, but the simulation with the value set the robot was able to kick without falling. The latter simulation is considered to be closer to reality. Now, we will explain about our robot model. We did two things to make the model lighter. Those are to reduce the number of bounding boxes for collision detection and to reduce the number of polygon vertices. We will now explain them. In order to make model lightweight, the bounding box, which is not so relevant to simulating collisions, was omitted. As a result of the reduction, the number of bounding boxes was reduced to 20 for the entire model. The model was simplified to reduce the number of vertices. Two simplifications were made. One was to fill in all the holes as shown in the figure. And the other was to replace circles with simpler shapes. Our team uses Autodesk's inventor to design our robot model. We achieved this through its inventor's functions of shrink wrap and human work. The number of verses was reduced from approximately 1.5 million to 7,500 vertices. As a result of reducing the number of vertices and the collision detection boxes, we were able to simulate a real time factor of 0 0.8 on a um, Intel ACE GEN i5 laptop without GPU. Next, we introduce the working controls. The system configuration is introduced first, followed by a video of the system in action. Working control system is configured as shown in the figure. Inverse kinetic matrix is solved based on 
the center of gravity trajectory obtained by the gate pattern generator and commands are sent to the motor. Feedback control uses angular vertices in the roll and pitch obtained from the IMU and angles measured by the motor's encoder. The source code is available to the public, so please refer to it for details. All working patterns gen generators features are that it can move in all directions and change the gate circle. I will now present video of them in moving. What you can see now is walking forward. We are using a self-made GUI tool that can operate and check the operation of the robot. By using this, you can check the walking motion by itself. This is backward walking. Feedback control is performed for the ankle joint and hip joint based on the values obtained from the IMU and encoder. This allows the robot to walk robustly even if the robot received an external force such as collision while walking. This walking sideways to the left and the right, the robot can move left and right at the sub stable speed for all artificial turf operations. Also, since the stride can be taken larger than, larger than in the front back directions, it is possible to move a lot at once. This rotation walking, this is the walk with walking in the robot's front and back and left right directions make it possible to approach the ball smoothly. Finally, regarding the gate circle, playing in order of normal, slowly early. Normal is walking in the gate circle that we normally use. Slowly is walking when the gate circle slows. Early is walking when the, when the gate circle faster. If the gate circle is slow, like slowly, the movement of the legs will not be in time for the movement of the center of mass of the robot and the balance will be poor. On the contrary, it becomes robust against external forces such as collisions by making the gate circle faster like early. By changing the gate circle in this way, the robustness of walking can be adjusted. Next, let me talk about vision. In this section, we will discuss cameras, object detection methods, and field detection methods. The role of vision, as the name implies, is primary to recognize objects on the field from images. First of all, let me talk about the camera we use. The camera used in our robot is Shikino High Tech KBC Arc S02 MU camera. The angles of view is 160 in horizontal uh, in diagonal. 124 in horizontal, 94 in vertical. And the resolution is 640 times 480. This information is reflected, reflected and used on VBOTS. We use YORO, a well-known object detection algorithm for object detection. Objects to be detected are the ball, goalpost and the robots. Thresholds are set between 80 and 90. Goalposts are used as the, one of the landmarks for self-localizing. When shadow were cast on objects or the number of ball types were increased, we were able to accommodate this by adding images to the data set. At the end of the computation, the number of data sets was approximately 4,600. This is the 
actual detection. The weight used in the competition were able to detect objects even when they were more than five meters away. Finally, let's look at the field detection. We use machine learning to detect white lines in images. White line is used as landmark for self-localizing as well as the goalposts. During this competition, the brightness and the backgrounds of the field were changed randomly. When this change was applied, white line detection did not work well with the previous learner and a method. We have therefore succeeded in stabilizing white line detection by training on images with various brightness levels. This effort will be explained in detail later. Finally, let me introduce the de decision-making process for the robot. Our robot uses decision-making algorithm called HCM Planner to plan its strategy. HCM Planner is an algorithm that can decompose and plan a hierarchical set of action and allows the human side to create a hierarchical set of actions. Now, let me introduce the team player roles. In our team, we play with different roles for each player. There are four roles, forward, defender, neutral, and goalkeeper. The role of forward is to score goals. The role of defender is to protect their own goal and prevent goals. When game stage is not playing or when the ball is lost, the defender is basically neutral. These three roles are switched in real time during the game, communicating between the players. The goalkeeper's role is to protect the goal from the opposing team by using their hands and body in front of his team's goal. This is the process of determining the major actions to be taken during the forward. In this action plan, the tasks executed by the robot itself and the state around the robot's transition. I know it's hard to ima ima imagine from the size, so let's take a look at the actual robot. First, if the robot has lost sight of the ball, it starts with the task of finding it. The robot searches around its surroundings to find the ball. If the ball is not found, it will search all over the field. If the ball is found, the player moves on to tasks of approaching the ball. When the robot is able to get close to the ball, it checks on self position and turns around so that the opponent's goal is directly in front of it. To shoot the ball, position and the robot so that it comes within range of kick the ball. Finally, they will kick the ball, choose the foot they want to use and kick according to the position of the ball. The robots share information with each other through information sharing and the roles are determined based on the position of the robots and the ball. Even if the ball carried out to our side, other side of the robot, our robot will carry the ball to the opponent side by switching the task of the robot. Robot tasks are switched immediately so that they do not overlap. Robot performs appropriate positioning depending on the situation. In this video, after the goal, a lady is called. Robots are returning to the to their position to resume the match. If the position of the robots overlap, robots will move to other position at the at their own directions. Goalkeeper can stop the ball. 
based on the speed and the position of the ball kicked by the opponent. If the ball comes to the left or right side of the goal, the robot jumps sideways to stop the ball. Many of our team members only have laptops without GPUs. Therefore, we developed strategy dev an environment for strategy development that can be handled even on a CPU laptop computer. Strategy dev is a very light environment that works with even when open on the virtual environment from VMware. To make strategy dev as light as possible, some processes and models have been changed. For example, the robot model has been simplified as much as possible and field have been removed from the turf. The robot is also given the coordinates of the ball, goalposts, and robots directly in true value without image processing. Oh. Hello, I'm Haruki Ogawa. Next, we will introduce the newly independent technology for the for this competition. First, I would like to introduce you to the generation of the kick motion using the Bayesian optimisti optimization. Whole body motion, such as the kick and get up motion that robots perform during a match is created by humans using using the keyframe. Keyframe is a method is a which a human specify parameters and generate motions. The keyframe is a whole body movement using this keyframe is a highly independent on the scale on the, of the creator. In addition, it is Difficult to create and imp improve the behavior of the robots because it must be done while checking the robot's behavior. Therefore, we thought that I could mechanically op optimize the parameters for the creation of the whole body movements. We also saw that it would be possible to generate powerful kick behavior. More simply than a human could create the parameters. We performed a kick, a kick frame on robots, measured the distance of the ball after the kick and optimized the various parameters. The parameter search was performed for all 18 joint access expect the euro access on the neck, which is considered unnecessary for the kick movement and certain frame that make up the movement movement within a range of plus minus five degree for the joint access and plus minus 0 0.05 seconds over the time per one, one frame. Learning the parameter search, we fix the position of the ball and the robot in the positional relationship shown in the RAN in the image. The reverse simulation time is a fast 
the, the speed up the parameter search. We performed this parameter search about 500 times. The position of the ball is fixed and the, and the robot's position coordinates uh, the distance Coordinates are changed by 10 millimeters first, back, left, and right. The kick motion is performed. The distance of the ball is each positional relationship is measured. We will compare the optimized kick motion with the kick and kick motion we manually created to RoboCup 2021 and investigate how much the flying distance change. Finally, I will put out a comparison video, the above in the optimized kick motion. Below is the kick motion we manually created at RoboCup 2021. As a result, the optimized kick motion improves the maximum distance by 20% compared to the kick motion we created manually. The figure below shows the measured distance of each kick motion when the position on the ball relative to robot is, is changed. We expected that optimization would narrow the effective range of the kick, but the major measurement results show that the effective range of the kick was not narrowed, but further expand. Considering this fact, using Bayesian optimization, we are able to generate a kick motion that, con that could send the ball further. Next, we talk about robust field detection. As we mentioned in the vision area, the blindness and background on the field change randomly during this competition. This change has made it impossible to detect flight line satisfactorily with the previous methods. Since our team used this, flight line is a landmark for safe location estimation. It would be fatal if the flight line becomes undetectable. Therefore, we expand to possibly or robustly Responding, uh, responding to changes in illumination by running at once using image with the various blindness levels. This time, GIMP was used to annotate these images used for training training. The advantage of GIMP is that it's free and can be used on Linux. In this case, we use GIMP to extract only the white line uh, and use it, use it as label data in machine learning. In this study, all label data is created manually. Using this method, we are able to randomly detect flight line even in environment with randomly, randomly changing lightning conditions. As you can see, flight line are detected for all images. As you have just discussed, we are able to achieve robust flight line detection is a is the simulation environment in this experiment. We will be to introduce, in, 
reproduce this result is a real environment for Thailand in the future. The, mes the method of learning with images of a various blindness used in the competition was confined to the effective in a simulation environment. In the future, we plan to conduct experiments to see if the same method can be used to detect various speed in the real environment. And if it is possible to do this independent of the camera parameters, we will looking, we will be looking for a way to that with the goal of the detecting the most robust field of any team at Novocap 2022. Hello, I'm Yugo Nishio. I would like to int introduce what we are currently working on for Robocop 2022. First, let's take a look at the hardware. We are focusing on the development of new robots. First of all, a new robot that we have been developing since last year for Robocop 2022, Thailand, Bangkok. The robot name is Sustainer. The robot is being developed with two main object objectives in mind. The first objective is to have a structure with high rigidity and durability. Robocop Saga is a game in which robots collide violently with their opponents during the competition. Therefore, the robot needed to have a highly rigid and durable structure that while will not break even after repeated collisions and tipping over. The second objective is to facilitate fabrication and maintenance for long-term use. The reason for the reason for this objective is that the Conventional loads ganking kun was not easy to maintain. Therefore, it was necessary to simplify the structures so that even members unfamiliar with the load could easily maintain it. Later in this session, I would like to introduce the means of solving this objective and what is newly imp implemented in this robot. Our effort to simplify, manufacture, and maintain. Most problematic part of conventional robot is the yo joint, the base of the leg. The thrust bearing was used because of the large axial loads applied at the location. However, such bearing has a disadvantage of being vulnerable to larger loads in addition to the performance being greatly affected by fret tolerance and machining accuracy. In the new model, these parts were changed to cross loader bearings. With this change, performance is no longer greatly affected by plate tolerance or machining accuracy. In addition, it has become stronger against radial loads and can withstand move violent movement. Next, we will explain and improve RS485 communication conversion for submotors. The conventional communication method use one lane for USB input to RS485 combustion. 
connecting 19 sub water in a daisy chain. Therefore, angle information was transmitted and received with a sub motors at the very end of the control cycle and an improvement was desired. The new model requires the 19 sub motors into four lanes for control, shortening the time required to communicate with all sub motors. This environment, all motor uh, allows more time in the control cycle and enables the acquisition, control, and logging of sensor value in the sub motors, which was not possible before. Next, I would like to introduce some of the publicly available documents. Hardware development for RoboCop 2022 is GitHub-based from development discussion to data release. All the data, including 3D models, circuit boards, and microcontroller firmware are available here. In addition, 3D models under development can be easily viewed in a browser using old desk viewer without having a build an environment. You can view model for all angles and even check the cross-sectional view and the model number with the existing product used. Please take a look at the QR code to access the site. Introducing the software we are developing for RoboCop 2022. As we mentioned earlier, on the subject of recognition, we use YOLO as our object recognition method. In this section, we will discuss our method of recognizing robots. There will be at least two different robots on the field, one from own teams and one from the reporting teams. Deep learning must be completed before the match, which requires collecting and annotating numerous images of the opposing team robot two days prior to the match tournament. While it is easy to collect images of own team's robots, balls, and goal posts, it is difficult to collect images of the other robots outside of the competition. Even if image could be collected, they may not be ready in the time for the match because of the time required for annotation and learning. Therefore, we saw that by including a small amount of the reporting team's robot dataset in a large amount of our team robot image dataset, we will be able to detect a variety of robots. First, all robots on the field are detected with the same class robot. The detected robots are identified as red and blue according to the color of the number attached to each robot. The dead set we created to detect the robot on the field is shown in the figure. Here, we use Bitbot robots for our experience. This data set contains approximately 90% data from robots that can be easily photographed and annotated, and 10% data from robots for which there are limited opportunities to collect data. The result of training on the data on this data set are shown on the next slide. This image shows three robots with our team and the opponent team being detected by the same class. We have been successful in detected, detecting robots that are only 10% increased in the data set. Next. The detected robots are identified 
as our robots or opponent by color. This slide explains in detail how to identify detected robots as our robots or opponent by color. First, the robot bounding box is cut from the detected image, which is used as input. Next, scan the cut out image one pixel at a time and examine the ratio of blue or red for each pixel. Compare which color is more prevalent when all pixels have been scanned. In this case, we can determine that it is a blue robot because there are a lot of blue pixels in the crop image. Using the method mentioned in slide before, three robots are successfully identified by the color of their respective numbers. We are able to detect a high percentage of all robots on the field using this set that include image of opponent robots for only about 10% of the total. The detected robot can distinguish between our robots and opponent robots by the color of their numbers. And we hope to use this information for robot decision making in the future. In addition, this was only an experiment on the simulator, but we would like to investigate whether it is feasible in a real environment for RoboCup 2022. Finally, a summary. Today's presentation introduces the team, the robot model, the robot system, the newly implemented implement technology for this competition and our effort for RoboCup 2022. All of these slides will be available on the CIT Brands website. If you are interested in joining for our team, you can view the QR code here. This concludes the presentation by CIT Brains. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for the CIT Brains? We do have about 10 minutes. So if you have any questions, you can either unmute yourself or raise your hand and then unmute yourself uh, when I call your name uh, or write them in the chat. Please note that when you use your microphone, then your voice will be uh, audible on the recording that we are pu uh, publishing on YouTube. So if you don't wanna be on that recording, then please write your question in the chat. Uh, yeah, Mark. Yes, I have. Uh, so first, thank you for your talk. It was really interesting and uh, a lot of details. Um, I have a question about your um, hardware interface. So around on slide 71, it was. Um, do you run you have any your questions? Yeah. The, so the question is, do you run your um, control loop cycle uh, with 100 hertz? Or what is the frequency that you use? Could you hear the question? Yes. <laughs> Could you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Okay. I don't know if they can hear I can you. Hear you. Oh. Oh. One more. One more. Okay, I can, okay, I can <laughs> say it again. Say it again. Um, so on slide 71, you were talking about your hardware interface um, with the um, bus system. So what um, control loop cycle rate do you uh, use? Do you have 100 hertz or do you reach more by using this four separated buses? Yeah. 
accessibility. Yeah, just the slide before that one. Oh. Uh, so 71. Yeah. Yeah. So so you you write 10 milliseconds uh, was the issue. So you are you now just reaching 10 milliseconds or do you reach like a better rate for reading your motors? Okay. Yes, we have reached to 10, mil 10 milliseconds. Okay. And did does like you use don't use the dynamics of servos like everybody else, but these from a different oh, manufacturer. From different, yes, from yeah. different. Yes. Do you do you read the servos each by itself, or do you have some kind of synchronized read and write command like the dynamics cells have? Yeah, I can also try to write it in the chat. Maybe it's so easier. we are controlling the server motor synchronized with uh, one using it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Maybe somebody else can also ask a question. Yeah. So anyone else? I don't see a question in the chat at the moment. Is there anyone else who wants to ask CIT a question? Um, perhaps just uh, a curiosity. So you um, you are able to position the robot for kicking in different direction. Uh, do you also have uh, different uh, strength of kicking? So can you choose also how far you kick? Uh, we don't have that. We didn't have any strengths of differences between just one strength of kicking okay. the Okay, thank you. Anything else you want to ask? So for the, uh, the next uh, virtual season, competition, which will be your priorities. So uh, first is about winning and second is about education for other like um, grades for it. I think that's it. Okay, thanks. Okay, if we don't have any other question, let's see. Oh. Ah, so Mark wrote a question in the chat, uh, so that may be easier for you to uh, translate it and then give the response. Oh. oh yes, uh, we coding our inverse kinematics program by ourselves. We do, don't use a library or something. Uh, no. Uh, we use uh, 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 sorry, uh, I forgot proper proper word. <laughs> Everyone is trusted that I didn't hear. Uh, I guess um, we use geometry solution. Thanks for all the right. 
If there are no more questions, then let's thank the speakers one more time.